it. Also with the same name, I would like to invite Dr. Neelakshi P. Kumar, consultant gynecologist, downtown hospital. Uh, and last but not the least, to join the panel, I would like to invite uh, the, uh, Dr. Shrabana Misra, uh, in charge Department of Preventive Oncology, Dr. B. Barua Cancer Institute, Gohati. A very warm welcome to all the panelists and the moderators. So we will be engaged in the session for next half an hour to 45 minutes. Good afternoon to everybody. Respected Professor S.E. Kotoki, former director, Tibura Cancer Institute. Respected Dr. Bike Das, Professor and Head, Surgical Oncology State Cancer Institute. Professor Nilakhi Mahanta, Medical Oncologist. Dr. Nilakshi Pukwan, consultant gynecologist, downtown hospital, and Dr. Sandna Mishra Bhagavati, in charge, Department of Preventive Oncology. Actually, today the organizers have given me a scope to a panel discussion on skill required for cancer cure. If you see, because I think many of you are only students here, so there is no, uh, hardly I think that any doctors are there. So many factors contributed inside a cell that result in cancer. The cancer, if you see, it is a interactions between the environmental factors, environmental factors outside the body external environment and inside the body, internal environment. Many risk factors are associated with cancers. The scientists, cancer researchers, they have uh, identified many cancer risk factors. And these risk factors, many of them are preventable. If we can avoid that, we can avoid cancer also. And many cancers are preventable, you know, even curable if you detect in early. Now, these factors, say, if I say hepatitis B causes liver cancer. Now, in Taiwan, hepatitis B was very much prominent. They have incorporated the, you know, the immunization schedule with hepatitis B. After 10-15 years, the incidence of liver cancer is going down. So that's why in our country also, the mother must be ready to carry her son or the daughter to the immunization center. And the concern department also should be ready for the Give, uh, uh, provisions of the vaccines. Now, tobacco is one of the major factors for cancers. Tobacco has already killed near about 7 million people annually in the world. And if this will continue, it will kill another 11 to 12 million people in by 20, 2025. And out of that, more than 80 percent will die from a country like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, all the African countries where this uh, uh, facilities for the cancer treatment is not so, uh, uh, you know, uh, up to the mark. Now, with this few words, I just want to put the next slide. Yeah. Now, question is that one couple, when they live in Tokyo and travel to New York, the incidence of stomach cancer, which is more common in Japan, is reduced. And when they uh, live permanently in New York, the colon cancer is going high in their case. So it is because of some food habit, from environmental factors, and for some you know sedentary habit sort of things. So as a general rule, that the constitutions and the habits of the people follow the nature of the land where they live. The Hippocrates get medical uh, or father of the medicines is saying that. Now, this cancer is caused by some agent 
and that agent is called carcinogen. These are some carcinogen, group 1 carcinogen to human beings, group 2A probably carcinogenic and group 2E possible carcinogens. There are so many carcinogens and in group 1, all this I will elaborate. The tobacco, tobacco is a major modifiable risk factor, alcohol abuse, unhealthy diet, infectious agent, ultraviolet radiations and physical inactivity. These are modifiable risk factors in cancer. And other, these factors are not modifiable. We cannot modify our age, we cannot modify our ethnicity or hereditary or sex. Now, the cancer in this, say, in our country, near about 35% cancer is caused by tobacco. Infection causes near about 20%. Nutrition, bad food habit causes 15 and others is 30%. So if you see this, if you avoid tobacco, if you avoid infections and if you take a good food, then at least 70 to 75% cancer can be preventable. Now, why tobacco is so harmful? Tobacco contains near about 4,000 4, chemicals, out of which 60 chemicals are known carcinogen. They can, they can cause cancer. Tobacco is the only consumable product in the world which can kill 50% of its users. Maybe cancer, maybe heart disease, maybe lung disease. Now, this tobacco con uh, smoke contains acetone, all are poisonous. Acetone, arsenic, butane, cadmium. And these are all class group 1 carcinogen. Now, our very traditional one, betel nut, is also carcinogen. If you put betel nut quid with the tobacco, that is a group 1 carcinogen. Betel quid without tobacco also, group 1 carcinogen. Tobacco smoking group 1, tobacco and smokeless tobacco, which our, most probably in India, 70 to 80 percent people use smokeless tobacco, means sada sort of things. And that is also group 1 carcinogen. Now, this betel nut contains these chemicals, ericoline, saffroli, etc. And a study suggested that saffroli was carcinogen and genotoxic. It can kill the gene. Now, alcohol is also one of the risk factors. Alcohol, when it is metabolized in the river, it becomes acetaldehyde, which, is, which can damage your DNA. Epigenetic changes, micronutrient deficiency. Alcoholics generally, they take less food because they are getting energy from the alcohol. They, that's why they are taking less fruits, less vegetables, less nutrition food. And increased blood level of estrogen also causes this uh, <coughs> cancer. Now, diet and cancer, if you see over in Northeast India, people, if they, that photograph is from the remote village from a Manipur bordering Myanmar. They, they, you know, they smoke meat like that and they keep this meat for years. They don't have a freeze in their house. So they have uh, make a procedure sort of thing. They keep this like this. And in that process, actually what happened, there is a uh, chemical called PAH, polyaromatic hydrocarbon is formed and which is a group one carcinogen. Now, here, if you see that in Managaland and Mizoram, their house is smoky because in winter they used to stay inside the house and they make a bonfire sort of things and carbon particles are deposited in their nasal cavity. Now these are the risk factors for infections, human papilloma virus, which causes cervical cancers, hepatitis B, which causes liver cancers, Epstein-Barr virus, which causes nasopharyngeal cancer, carcinoma. Human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, which causes AIDS and related cancers. Then all these causes, all the risk factors is infectious agent. Now, if you see the cervical cancers, 100% cancer is caused by HPV. Then liver cancer, 86% caused by the hepatitis B, like lymphoma. Then genital nasopharynx, Kaposi's sarcoma. But in that 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 uh, uh, data has been collected from the uh, cancer atlas, and they say that 100% cervical cancers is because of HPV. Then these are the leading sites of cancer in Northeast India. Esophagus is the number one case in male, lung, 
stomach, hypopharynx, and mouth. And in female, it is a breast, cervix, esophagus, lung, and gallbladder. And these are some incidents of cancer in Northeast India, per thousand, hundred thousand populations. In Aizol, is the highest number, near about 243 per lakh populations is the highest number of cancer patients in India. Then Papampura district of Ornasal, then East Kasi Hills, then Kamrup rural district. And if you see the incidents in Delhi, Chennai, Mumbai and Barsi, all are lower than the Northeast India. Like, this is for female. Again, Papampura is uh, taking the leading. Aizol, Kamrup, East Kasi Hills, and Delhi, Chennai, Mumbai, Barsi, they are less than the Northeast India. Now, tobacco and alcohol burden in Northeast India, you see near about 80 percent from Mizoram, they smoke, and near about 59 percent persons take alcohol in ordinary police. <coughs> now, there is st uh, interesting data that in Northeast, the incidence of tobacco users among 15 to 13 <coughs> years of age, pediatric cells go, is highest in the world. That have, been, that have been published in the Tobacco Atlas. And even in Mizoram, it is more than 40% below 13 to 15 years people used to take. And in Assam and other parts also 25 to 40%. Now, what is the problem with this one? If a person start tobacco in, at the age of 15 or 13 years, at the age of 25, or at the age of 45 years, he become a cancer you know, victims many times. And that 45 years is a years for the productions for the family, productions for the nations. Now, there is another liquid form of tobacco, which is, which is the only liquid form of tobacco available in the world. In Mizoram, that is called Toibur, T-O-I-B-U-R. That Toibur, how they prepare, they, they put the tobacco in a container, tobacco leaves, then burn it, and with a pipe, they put under the water, and when water becomes brown, they bottle it and they take it. This is the only liquid form of tobacco in the world, which is permanent in Mizoram. Now, leading site in Assam, the cancer sites, esophagus, hypopharynx and lung, female breast, esophagus and gallbladder. Again, gallbladder is coming to the third position in Assam, and that because maybe gallbladder cancer is because of some contaminations of the food, or maybe some contamination of the water, mainly cadmium or lead. Esophageal cancer is more common in Assam because extensive use of smoking and alcohol. Now in Ornasol, again, stomach cancers, male and female both. And it is because, again, excessive use of smoking and alcohol and tobacco. Then Manipur, again, lung cancer is more common. In female, breast cancer is common. Meghalaya, again, esophagus and female esophagus. I think all our doctors agree that in female, esophagus cannot be a number one uh, cancer except in Meghalaya. In female, it is the breast cancer or the cervical cancer. So in Meghalaya, esophagus is top in the list for the female. Now, again in Mizoram, I told you because of toilet and all, all these things, stomach cancer is the most common. And Nagaland, again, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, this is because of the Epstein-Barr virus and their habit. Now, Tipura again, lung cancer and cervical cancers. Leading site in CP means stomach and breast. Now, uh, this is uh, one of the research papers published by us in association with IIT Guwahati. And the, for the first time, we have shown the role of AKT, protein B kinase, in the oral squamous cell carcinoma. This has been published in the biomolecules. And the research is going on from our institute with the help of IIT. Now, we have done some screening program in Meghalaya. There are our total patients who have screened for 454, male and female like that. Topical users is 67%, within that users is 77%. And when we found this, these are findings, lycoplakia, which is a pre-malignant condition, erythroplakia, pre-malignant conditions, submucosal fibrosis, melanoplakia, and cancers. Now, these are some pre-chem. The great 
aim of the education is not knowledge but actions. Whatever knowledge we gathered from the tobacco, alcohol, and all these things should be converted to the actions. Otherwise, that knowledge has no meaning. With this few words, I want to invite Dr. Amal Patuki, the directors, to say something about the, the third one, part of turning into hub for cancer treatment and research, because he has contributed a lot in the last 15 years for the development of cancer treatment in Northeast India. Dr. Patuki, please come. I like to thank uh, Dr. Bolua for a nice elaboration overview of this cancer scenario in this uh, northeastern region in the country as a whole and also about the risk factor. I'd like to also inform you that there is a shortage of uh, infrastructure facilities in the country as a whole, not only specific to the northeastern region. For <coughs> example, Radiotherapy is one of the most important components for the treatment of cancer. Our country needs about 1300 daily radiotherapy machines, but then we have about 650 teletherapy machines, that means 50% less. Similarly, so for the manpower is also concerned, that is equally important, acute shortage of trained human resources in the field of oncology. Till some time ago, in Assam and the Northeastern region, there is very limited cancer treatment facilities. Oldest one probably cancer treatment facility was in the Assam Medical College, subsequently Viborua Cancer Institute, now Northeast Cancer Hospital, State Cancer, and many cancer hospitals are coming up in the state of Assam. And then you will be very happy to know that the government of Assam has taken an initiative to tie up with a Tata Trust to form a company called Assam Cancer Care Foundation. And the initiative of the Assam Cancer Care Foundation, already seven new cancer hospitals have been started, and then seven more are also going to be inaugurated very soon. Altogether, about uh, 18 to 19 new cancer hospitals will come up in the city of Guwahati already has. Uh, like the two, three private sector cancer hospital. Another important area that even northeastern states also. Now each and every northeastern states has a cancer hospital. Till some time ago, the state of Sikkim did not have a cancer hospital. Now it has got a cancer hospital. So, but the overall burden you see in the northeastern region, we see about. 45,000 new cancer patients in the northeastern region where population is about 4.5 crores. And then Assam alone, because of the large population, contribute to about 35,000 new cancer patients. So it is very important that once these facilities are created, Assam and the northeastern region will be able to deal with the large numbers of the cancer patients because Incidence of cancer is very high in the northeastern region, Dr. Borua has highlighted. As per population-based cancer registry of ICMR, which was established in 1981, at that time we had only three population-based cancer registry in our country. Now we have about 38 population-based cancer registry, out of which about 15 are in the northeastern region, and these registries have shown very high incidence, starting with Mizoram, Dr. Lorua has highlighted in case of male, then East Kassir district, Assam, then in case of female, again, Papumper district, uh, East Kassir district, and uh, Arban Kamlo district of Assam. So, it is a very promising development that government of Assam has taken these steps, and then we are sure if it is properly managed, properly funded, properly uh, the governed, probably we will be able to take care of the rising number of the patient. And then you will be very happy to know if this becomes functional, probably that will be only state uh, uh, in the entire country to have uh, adequate number of cancer hospitals. As per ICMR report, about 10% of the patient uh, from the state of Assam go out of the region for the treatment, whereas from the other northeastern region, a significantly high proportion of patients go out, and then we are optimistic that uh, scenario is going to change shortly. Dr. Kotaki, now may I request Dr. B.K. Das, who is a senior 
or surgical oncologist. And he is one of the pioneers in surgical oncologists in Assam and Northeast. Uh, can I request uh, Dr. Das, why so breast cancer is a very common sort of thing among the families in India. But why breast cancer is coming in very late to late stage? What is your strategy to bring the patient for the early detections and curability? Can I? Thank you, Dr. Moonin. A very nice question indeed. Uh, before I really start speaking, uh, let me bring to you all uh, my best wishes and greetings on behalf of the State Cancer Institute uh, which is attached to the Medical College, especially on behalf of Dr. Nilaksi, myself and my director, Dr. B.C. Gosami, who could not physically come today. Second thing, uh, I'm glad to be here and thank you the organizers for giving us the chance to speak out here. And my pertinent question was about the breast cancers. So, why it is common and how to reduce it, the incident, that was my query. So, one thing is very dear to me, I one sentence actually, I have been telling in number of occasions, just to live among so many calamities, hostilities, ill feeling, accident, tsunamis, then earthquake, just to live is as great a miracle as to have been born. That we are living is a miracle. And cancer is a calamity that can befall in any one of us. So most important thing is this, that we should know the cancer. Know thy enemy, that is the catch word. Because you know, if mind doesn't know, eyes cannot see. That is very important thing. So possibly this is the occasion where these uh, students will be sensitized to know what it is actually, how to know cancer, how to uh, how to detect it in early stage. See, <coughs> earlier, possibly the better speaker director is here, so cancer of the mouth of the uterus, we call cervical uterus, was the number one. And of late, the breast cancer is number one cancer among the females, right? Many people may be of uh, thinking that breast cancer is common in the, the rural area, rural setup. Nay, no, it is more common in the metropolitan cities. Now question is why it is in metropolitan, they eat so well, always goes in the car and always the, why it is so. Maybe again, Dr. Muni already said this that cancer itself is a lifestyle disease. So, because the lifestyles in the urban areas and metropolitan cities is, is completely different that we have in the rural area, but possibly that may contribute to having this cancer of the breast, female breast, okay? Males are not also immune, I'll be talking about it. So, that is our female disease. And now, why it is common, that is a difficult to answer, but one thing, see, among all other human organs, right? The one is the breast, female breast, another is the mouth of the cervix or cervix which are right. These are the two organs, they get tremendous physiological changes during the lifetime of a woman. Just imagine when a girl gets a first puberty, there is some change. Every month there is some changes in the breast, right? And when she goes for uh, pregnancy, there is some change. When she goes for lactation, having milk, there is some change. And when she stops with milk, there is some change. Again, approaching menopause, some change. So you can imagine what tremendous change of physiological changes that occur in the brain. Possibly that is another reason why there can be just derailment of the whole thing and what can have the breast cancer. Now, Dr. Munin was hinting, uh, in spite of uh, increasing our knowledge in the cancers, in spite of having so much of uh, meetings and etc. regarding breast cancer awareness, still we get very late cases. And you know, take it from me, here, breast cancer, if we, if we can detect it early and adequately treat it, it is completely curable as we cure ordinary typhoid or malaria like that. But pathos is this, the issue is this, we hardly get in a very early stage. We are getting, but 
there are a lot of things to do. Now, why they come late? See, if we can enumerate the causes, number one is this, the ignorance. Just now I told you, what mind doesn't know, eyes cannot see. In common colloquial language, they have a lump here, they have a tumor in the brain, the ladies folk, women folk, they are quite unaware. Nobody, nobody, nobody really cares. So one is ignorance. Second is procrastination is also one thing. They will think that, no, no, it is a painless tumor, will go tomorrow, or day after, then, then months and years pass off. And when they really approach the doctors, and it is quite uh, the advanced stage. Then, then sense of modesty, the lack of, lack of they, they don't want to come to the male doctors, these are one thing. So all this is contribute that the breast cancers, even though we can detect it very early, we don't have to have a, a very high tech thing to detect. Uh, when we reach the doctors, it's very less things. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Das. Uh, actually, uh, maybe Dr. Kotaki also will agree that many times in Western countries or in the, even the African countries, the nursing professions, they have a breast clinic where they palpate the breast and if they find anything wrong, they refer to the doctors. But these things are yet to come out in our uh, uh, country. Because this is very important. Only doctor cannot uh, treat the treat and uh, cure all the patient. The paramedical staff should be utilized very nicely. Can I mention something? Yes, yes. So another thing regarding the breast cancer, the cell breast examination that we can promote to the public how to do the cell breast examination. Once a month they can fix a date after periods who are having periods. Otherwise, any date they can. There are some pictures if you go to the google you will find or if you go to the healthcare they will tell you how to do the cell breast examination and here you can detect breast cancer at a very very early stage uh, uh, now i want to ask you uh, you were a gynecologist in downtown hospital so i i know that uh, cervical cancer is one of the most common cancer in india and it is because of the hepatitis and it is a, a human papilloma virus now uh, can you tell me that uh, how many patients you get HPV related cancers or early stage? Because in T T place, in the T organs, oral cavity, cervix, and the breast, cancer can be detected early. Yeah. But still in India, I think we are getting near about 70 to 80 percent cancer patient in advanced stage, even in cervix also. Yes, because uh, people are also reluctant to show. And sometimes we doctors do not give that much effort, but it, it should be a routine. Uh, I think it's a, it's a routine to check your cervix. But, uh, and in India, above 35, it's a rule, go for pap smear. And pap smear nowadays, there are different types of pap smears that are available. One is liquid-based cytology and HPV testing. So suppose it is negative today, with liquid-based cytology, you repeat it after three years. And if it is negative for human papilloma virus, then you can repeat it after five years. It's a, you can go on screening till the age of 65. After that, if it is negative, you can stop it. So when we do a cervical pap smear, there we can see the cellular changes. So suppose there is a change today. It will take a long years, five to ten years to, to transform into a the real cancerous growth. So we can prevent, this is the only ca cancer, I think you can, we can prevent it. It's not only early detection, we can prevent it. And now we have the option for vaccination. So uh, right now we have in the market, we have got one vaccine, we call it quadrivalent vaccines because HPV we have many strains. Can I, can I interview? Is supplying the HPV vaccines? Uh, what I would like to bring it to the notice of the everyone present here, the World Health Organization has given a clarion call to eliminate cervical cancer by 2030. By this, they say 90% of the girls should be vaccinated by the age of 15. That is one strategy. Number two strategy, 70% of the women at risk should be screened 
either by HPV DNA testing or by available test PEP at the age of 35 and 45. And the number three strategy, all the cancer patients or the precancerous that are detected by this first and the second strategy should be treated, should be treated, 90% should be treated. And then fortunately, Government of India also has introduced, the Serum Institute is going to bring out a vaccine, quadrivalent cervical vaccine, and the Government of India has already announced that it will be part of the immunization program, and then that is going to take care of the future health of the women in our country. Uh, we are having, I think, we are discussing the time. Uh, can you ask the, Dr. Nilakshi Mahanto to say something about the latest developments uh, in terms of maybe targeted therapy and the immunotherapy which are available in our country? How it? Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Boru, and thank you to the organizers. And greetings from State Cancer Institute. Uh, the question that's been asked to me is about the newer advances that are happening in cancer not just globally, but they have reached us locally. So today is the day of precision medicine, precision personalized medicine. Two patients having the same cancer, the same histopathology, the same stage, may be treated totally differently. And this is based on the molecular profiling or the genetic profiling of the patients. Today it has been realized, we have talked a lot about the trigger factors in the environment which we know as the etiology or the causes of cancer. But what are these factors doing to us? So these factors, when we are exposed over a long period of time to these kind of factors, they cause something which we call as mutations in the cellular level or the genetic level of our cells. So uh, in, in a simple way I can say, that we already have our gun that is loaded. Only the trigger needs to be pulled. So each one of us probably already has a lot of mutations within us. It is only a matter of time or a trigger factor that just needs to come up and that will just produce a massive proliferation or multiplication of these cancer cells. Now, if we can identify by very specialized sensitive testing techniques about these mutations that are there in our cells, then there are, in today's date, there are appropriate targeted therapies or precise therapies to hit that cancer. If we broadly know cancer treatment, we know there is a surgical treatment where you are going to cut off the part. We know that there is radiation therapy where you're going to give ray to the part. We know the very old age chemotherapy, it's been there for decades. And we all know that when chemotherapy is given to a patient, there are so many side effects that the patient has to go through from hair fall to blood count dropping to skin changes to diarrhea and so on and so forth. Because these chemotherapy agents affect not just the cancer cells, they affect even the normal cells of our body. But today's technological advances have been able to identify or discover medicines which can hit only the cancer cells. So if we have a particular kind of a mutation, then there is possibly a particular kind of a therapy which will hit that particular cancer cell and will cause destruction without causing collateral damage. So just as technologically we are moving to more and more precise you know, advances, so this is happening in cancer also, and we are delivering today targeted therapies, we are delivering immunotherapies, we are giving monoclonal antibodies, and so on and so forth. Some of the most advanced techniques are available to us, and uh, very, very sophisticated diagnostic techniques are also coming up, which we are able to do on our cancer patients, and Northeast is not behind in this. We are moving forward. Uh, uh, if you see the... Prevention is better than cure, and many cancers, I have shown that 70 to 80 percent cancer is preventable. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Sarvani, Mr. Bhagavati, to say something about the preventive measurement, how you do in Assam, or what is your suggestions to develop it, because without, I think, screening, early detection is possible with screening only. And in countries where, you know, uh, this screening program is very uh, prominent, like Japan and the uh, other Korean country. There, there even many bad cancers are also curable because they can they can uh, screen it, they can diagnose it early. 
highlight some few points because we are having again time. Thank you very much, sir. And thanks to the organizers. Uh, actually, as you said, sir, uh, prevention is always better than cure. That is the real truth. And uh, when it comes to prevention, uh, in Assam, currently, as far as uh, our institution is concerned, we are targeting towards primary prevention, primordial prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. In the first uh, modality, we go for the awareness generation in the rural areas, in the remote areas, and different areas. Because sensitizing the people, uh, making the people aware, that is very important. As Bikeda sir has very rightly said, that people come very late because they don't know. So we try to make them aware about the situation, about the different uh, early signs and symptoms of cancer, the risk factors, and we try to do the behavioral changes. And we have some behavioral changing models as well, because nowadays we are having counselors from the tropical quit line. So they help us to do the behavioral change counseling and all. And uh, uh, every week uh, um, at this uh, moment, I can say every week we are holding such uh, screening and uh, this awareness programs around the three to four such uh, sensitization program. Even today, one group has gone to Dibrugar and one group has done in Gohati. So uh, like that, it is going ongoing. And apart from that, uh, in the um, other thing, the primary prevention, we go for the early detection. For the early detection, we have uh, different, uh, you know, uh, we have targeted the common cancers like oral cancer, breast cancer, and cervical cancer. Oral cancer is as very easily detectable. Uh, our doctors can detect it very easily. And uh, apart from that, um, cervical cancer, we either go for VIA, basically we go for VIA because uh, we can cover a lot many people and it is very easy to do. And even a trained nurse can do. So we go for VIA and in some circumstances we go for PEP also because we have that facility also. At BBC we have pathology department, oncopathology department. So that is also possible. We go for that also where it is feasible. And uh, apart from that breast cancer detection, that is by doing the uh, clinical examination on field or in the clinic which is there at BBCI which is inaugurated by our respected uh, former director sir he is sitting here Dr. A.C. Kotoki so uh, nowadays we are getting whatever cases we get our Im very important is to navigate them because even after detection they are very reluctant to come that is also a very important part very important arm in cancer prevention and control. So navigating them, uh, like following them up, that is a real challenge. Nowadays we are taking different strategies to follow them up. If needed, I am sending the counselors to the field to go for house to house uh, follow up even at uh, Rami. Recently we did that. So from our institutions we are taking all these measures. Any questions? Yeah, please. Yes, I do have, sir, I have questions. Thank you for drawing my aspects. Uh, you mentioned about uh, smoking. Uh, what about passive smoking? Does it contribute to the. I'll come to it. There are a few more. I had lived in Delhi for 35 years, was exposed to particulate matter, PM 22.5 or 10. So does it contribute to the thing? Then I have a few supplementaries that I can't tell fast. Uh, what about uh, this uh, uh, obesity? Uh, does it contribute to. Uh, uh, then um, you uh, have, I mean, we are all addicted to screens, mobile, TV or other laptop screens. Uh, the radiation, does it really contribute to uh, uh, cancer? And I also want to know from you the uh, uh, prostate cancer, what are the causative factors for prostate cancer? Okay, uh, first I will answer. Sorry for loading the yeah, yeah. Uh, That one, uh, for smoke, Less. Uh, we are talking about the passive smoking. Yeah, passive smoking is more. Passive smokes contain more carcinogen than, than the no, normal smoke. When somebody smoke, this smoke goes inside with a filter vapor, and the burning end that smoke contains more carcinogen. And you are talking about the environmental pollution also. When there is a polycyclic hydrocarbons, uh, hydro, uh, what is that? Uh, nitrostamines contain that. That, that is more dangerous. Regarding one one point, you are talking obesity. obesity and the third one is uh, exposure to oh that that one actually what happened? 
This this radiation is non-ionizing. Non-ionizing cannot break the DNA. So I don't think that because there is a big research in Denmark where they have collected the mobile users' data, the bill. Suppose your bill is ten thousand, my bill is five thousand. So they have collected ten years. They have collected that bill. After that, they go. They they, 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 they they follow the persons who has used more mobile, and there is no brain tumor sort of things like that. And regarding obesity, yes, obesity has a negative factors. Means you know <clears throat> sedentary habit, but that obesity causes mainly colon cancer. Mainly colon cancer. That's why those people who are sedentary habit, those who take more fatty diets, more saturated uh, fatty acids, and those who consume more animal protein. There is a sense of that one. And regarding post prostate cancer, I think uh, this cancer also causes cancer. Like obesity is one of the important risk factor for the breast cancer because uh, in the peripheral fat tissue, endosteinism is converted to the estrogen. So breast cancer is also very prone for this in obesity. And Bolua uh, has highlighted colorectal cancer, even pancreatic cancer incidence goes up. Regarding prostate cancer, I think people will tell you. Prostate cancer also, there is no one cause because of this at all, the prostate is cancer. All these factors, this, uh, smoking, that uh, alcohol, or smoking and alcohol, both this combined, and uh, the sedentary habits. And the age is the most important factor, so age is. Uh, Dr. Das is right, because you see, in the Western world, incidence of prostate cancer is much higher than the developing countries because of this obesity and the dietary factor. All these factors again contribute to the high incidence of prostate cancer in this developed countries, European countries, also, and the smoking. But same is not true. But it is gradually increasing in metropolitan countries. So, uh, maybe is there any questions from so, the audience? Sir, I have one question. Yeah, please. So normally we can see that uh, we used to say uh, diabetic uh, is a genetic kind of uh, like you know uh, diabetic come from genetic things. So is cancer also come from genetic or it happens? Oh, actually, four to five percent cancers may come as a genetic familial, you know, sort of things. So suppose stomach cancer. Stomach cancer, sometimes it becomes genetic. Even the Napoleon's whole family died of stomach cancer. And the breast cancer also. Breast cancer also, sometimes, yeah, it, it comes in the family. Uh, colorectal also. Yeah, there are certain, uh, as uh, Sir has rightly said, so about 10% of cancers can run in family, so they are called the hereditary cancers. Uh, if you remember the, uh, uh, the news about Angelina Jolie, so if you, if you trace her uh, you know, ancestry, she comes from the Ashkenazi Jews. It has been seen that in that community, the mutation in the BRCA gene, BRCA gene, is very high. And if it is positive, the BRCA gene 1 and 2 is mutated, then the chance of having breast cancer and ovarian cancer is 30% higher than the general population. So what did she do? She went for a prophylactic mastectomy and removed both her ovaries also because she did not want to carry that extra 30% risk of developing a cancer in her lifetime. This cannot become a blanket rule to everybody, but yes, it is a choice. Today, you can do your genetic profiling and find out whether you are at risk of a hereditary cancer or a cancer for which maybe, even if it's a somatic mutation, it can be identified. And thereafter, you can be counseled whether you want to go for a prophylactic surgery of that part, which might become prone to a cancer in the future, or very frequent screening. You can go for surveillances at a much more frequent rate than the general population because of your higher risk. Thank you so much, sir. One Actually, more. genetic counselling is coming in a very big way in the field of prevention. That that we should really uh, give importance to. Mm, there is one more question, sir. Actually, nowadays we can see that uh, normally whatever whatever things uh, we used to like survive, we directly go to the Google and we used to uh, search everything. So, uh, likewise, uh, it, it was a discussion. In the discussion, we had uh, talked about the lipoma that we used to get in our body, right? 
So this kind of thing when we get something in the skin, some type of muscles that comes out or some sort of like uh, uh, black, black hair, it's not exactly the black hair. So if we cut it off, it comes again with that kind of thing. So is it a cancer or it's something else? <laughs> we, we, we doctors generally don't teeth like Dr. Google. <laughs> we, we follow the standard book. Yes, sir. <laughs> standard books to, you know, in, in, in medical science, there are so many things in Googles. But once there is, these things is coming to the textbook, textbook, then only we can recognize or we can say that, okay, this one. Regarding our point, yeah, lymphoma is a disease that is uh, from the neck gland or the gland from the uh, body. And uh, many times lymphoma, I think, doctor, yeah, <laughs> can be curable in many times nowadays. But every skin nodules is not lymphoma. There may be benign also, papilloma also, benign disease. So I think with this, uh, any questions? Yeah, there are questions. Uh, 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 what is the, uh, how much of cancer research is happening in the country? There are some which are not genetic, which are like, you know, for this, there's no reason at all other than maybe environmental factors. I mean, is there anything like genetic cancers are less curable than environmental cancers or is there any kind of research in this happening in the country? Actually, if you see, I'll, I'll get the mic to the Dr. Kotaki also, he was also associated with the research. Even, even we from our institute is doing research with the help of IIT. We are making a big tissue bank here. More than 1,500 tissue has been already, you know, uh, deposited in the IIT. And we are trying to find out the cancer lines, genetic lines, and the different type of, you know, markers. Markers means in the, in, on the cell wall, there are some protein expression is there, so that we tar can target that protein. So with the help of IIT, IIT have a very good, you know, or laboratory for cancer research here in Guwahati. And regarding cancer research in India, yeah, there are maybe some clinical research, genetic research, and the research for the develop the marker. Markers are the thing, support for ovarian cancer. There is a marker called CA125. That is increased. So without doing even the ultrasound also, you can say, okay, this may, patient may have ovarian cancer. Like here also, because breast cancer is developed very nicely in world means uh, Western countries because they that is their common problem and they have developed lot of markers, lot of things, genetic things for the breast cancers. But in India, head and neck cancer, cervical cancers is the more common cancers, and head and neck cancers yet to develop some markers because that is not their problem. That is our problem, and I think Dr. Kotiki can explain also because he has a lot of experience on that. Government of India through Indian Council of Medical Research, Department of Biotechnology, and uh, various uh, educational institutes of national importance like IIT, NIT, has given a lot of emphasis on any type of the research. But the need of the hour for the Northeastern region will have to conduct some research for the cancer which are peculiar to the Northeastern region and then common cancer. I'd like to bring it to your attention. The health monitoring survey report of the ICMR and then health response preparedness, which was released for the state of Assam in December 2020. And then this report has shown that about 91% of the population in the state of Assam use wood as a source of fuel for fire, which is an important risk factor in your pollution and then that makes women susceptible to lung cancer. About 80% of the population in the Assam, they take excessive salt, not only leads to the cancer or the hypertension, and then another 70% of the population in the state of Assam take salt curated food, preserved food and then fermented food and the dead fermented food also is a responsible for factor. But then irony is that in spite of the fact that we have NCD clinic in the community level health center, primary health center, and that this report has showed that only 
24% of our population is aware about the cancer prevention and early detection. There are no facility for cancer screening in the community level health center. Only 24% of the district hospital are equipped for cancer screening. So DWD, our body, Assam and the North region is to conduct in association with the hospital setting in the centers like IIT, NIPAR and uh, RMIC Dibugar to conduct research on the common cancers of the North East region like cancer of the esophagus, cancer of the lung, cancer of the stomach, cancer of the lesopery. These are common cancer. We have to get the answers for the common cancer because traditionally we, we, we always know that okay smoking causes lung cancer but then it has been proved that smoking causes lung cancer mostly squamous cancer but then why non-small non cell adenocarcinoma of the lung is more common. That may not be related to the smoking. So these are just some research questions that we will have to answer. So uh, my another request that a lot of, lot of, you know, commercial petal nut and tobacco product available in the market is creating, I think, more cancer in this country. If you when I walk from Ulubari to Ganeshguri, every second you will get some, you know, soft, fun soft. And what I understand, I have noticed that one, the persons who smoke or the take uh, uh, this uh, smokeless tobacco and the persons who take betel nut in our village, raw betel nut, uh, uh, that one, uh, betel leaf, and the persons who take two, three packet, mix it and put it, I think more dangerous and it created more damage in the oral cavity and last 10 years what we are dealing with oral cancer is really really very difficult because it damaged the entire oral cavity and you know these people are the worst sufferer who is using the commercial petal nut and tobacco product so one question if any could uh, last, last put, yeah this is a last question sir uh, recently one of my uncles who was detected with the colon cancer he got through the treatment, he was cured, but after some time, again he got the, you know, it, it got relapsed. So, just I want to know, what are the reasons for this? And another question, are there any mental psychological impact on the patient which actually enhances that disease? Is there anything? Okay. Uh, colonic cancer is one of the cancer where we can achieve complete cure. But that you are talking about recurrence, this can happen with any other cancer. The most important thing is this, we keep the patient in close follow-up and surveillance. So if that could have been there, there was always a second option, a second treatment, a third treatment, and to know whether that particular patient you are talking about had the adequate treatment or not, that also we have to see. We call it adjuvant therapy, whether uh, after doing the surgical part and do a thorough biopsy of the specimen, whether was there any indication for giving more drugs or more radiation or things like that. Those all things should be uh, included. Is it said? Yeah. So for the biological behavior of the metastatic disease depends upon the type of the cancer. If a lung cancer patient, there is a metastasis in the brain or the bone, it is very difficult to cure. But then so for the colorectal cancer, suppose if it spreads to the liver, still there are drugs available which can give a better result than the lung cancer metastasis. So biological behavior of the metastatic disease vary from the type of the cancer, size of the cancer. So, with these few words, uh, I want to uh, conclude. But before conclusions, I want to say one thing. Prevention is better than cure. Actually, in India, screening programs should be intensified for the early detections, cure. And only we can achieve that because in many countries, they have achieved, screening program has achieved. Maybe what we, Dr. Kotoki, Dr. Das and myself, is near about 35 years in this field, and uh, when we start our career in uh, 1990s, 90s, the same type of advanced cases is coming to us till today also. So thank you very much for your kind help. So after this uh, very insightful session and the most uh, 
debatable and researchable topic uh, being cancer. Um, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. B. Kalyan Chakravarti, IAS Principal Secretary to the Government of Assam, to give away the, a vote of um, thanks and momento to our dear panelists here. Can I call upon uh, Dr. Amal Kartiki, MD Executive Director, Dr. B. Bora, Cancer Care Institute. Please. Further, can I call Dr. B. K. Das, Professor and Head, Surgical Oncology, State Cancer Institute. And request the audience to, you know, applaud a little more. Further, can I call Dr. Neelakshi Mahanata, Professor and Head, Medical Oncology, State Cancer Institute. <laughs> Further, can I call Dr. Neelakshi P. Kumar, Consultant Gynecologist, Downtown Hospital. Also, uh, can I call Dr. Srabana Mishra, in charge Department of Preventive Oncology, Dr. B. Bora, Cancer Institute, Guwahati. Last but not the least, uh, the moderator of our session, Dr. Munindra Barua, Managing Director, Northeast Cancer and Research Institute.